Hello, everyone. Welcome to the CircuitPython Weekly for, wait for it, February 22nd, 2022. Uh, this is the time of the week we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Katni, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them in CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday, as happened this week. Uh, in which case it gets bumped to Tuesday most often. Uh, in the notes document, there is a link to a calendar that you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications to the upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive those notifications, please ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. The notes document contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts that interest you. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. After each meeting, we'll post a link to next week's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel and the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can always leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, except when we have the meeting on Tuesdays uh, as it's already been published this week. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from what we're, what we're all up to. The third part is hug reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is Status Updates. Status Updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. Take a couple minutes to talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth and final part is In the Weeds, which is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These discussions can come out of Status Updates or be something you've identified ahead of time is too long for Status Updates. And that is how the meeting will go. So with that, I will get started with community news. So this, uh, well, not this week, but recently, um, we reached the milestone of 256 boards running CircuitPython. And why celebrate 256? It's because it's one more than fits in an 8-bit value. So we... Uh, we celebrated it in binary. There is an amazing graphic in the notes document um, if you're interested. And did you know that not all CircuitPython boards are made by Adafruit? Not by a long stretch. Uh, SparkFun has 15 boards, Pimeroni has 9, and so many more. CircuitPython is an open source language which any hardware designer may look to use. Next up is the CircuitPython 7.2.0 release candidate zero has been released. Um, there's a list of notable additions since 7.1, which most of which we've probably covered before um, because there's not a lot of changes between the last 7.2.0 release and the release candidate, um, mostly bug fixes. And uh, please test out the release candidate. We're probably going to go stable very soon because we haven't found very many issues. And I'm sure um, there's a couple other folks that will talk more about that uh, later. So next up, make your own standalone Winamp skinned music player. Bring back the good old days of llama whip and fun. This project will turn your Pi Portal into an MP3 player to play your favorite tunes with the familiar Winamp look. Create and manage multiple JSON playlists and rock out to whichever one fits your mood, all done in CircuitPython. Take a step further by choosing a custom uh, Winamp skin and converting it to use on your Pi Portal. And this was uh, put into a guide written by our own foamy guy. 
Next up, Whippersnapper no code IoT platform now works with Adafruit Feather Huzzah ESP8266. Um, so Whippersnapper support for the the Feather Huzzah ESP8266 is here. Over the past few weeks, Melissa worked on a web-based installation tool to upload firmware to an ESP8266 or an ESP32. Additionally, this tool also generates little FS file system containing Adafruit IO and Wi-Fi network credentials and uploads them to your board. And I have the project of the week. Um, Zabbix is an open source monitoring software tool to monitor IT infrastructure such as network servers, virtual machines, and cloud services. It collects and displays monitoring metrics such as CPU, memory, and network load. Sterling Anderson has developed a standalone display for Zabbix data. It uses an Adafruit Pi portal programmed in CircuitPython to fetch data via Wi-Fi and display it on a color LCD display. And it is housed in a fancy 3D printed case. So this has been community news. It is um, pulled from our CircuitPython weekly newsletter, which is a CircuitPython community run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available on adafruitdaily.com. It highlights the latest Python on hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. You can contribute your own news or project by submitting a PR on um, the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter GitHub repo, uh, or you can tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter, or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And thank you to Anne for all of the work that she puts into getting the newsletter out uh, with all this great information. And that is community news. So next up is the state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. So this is a statistical overview of the project by the numbers. We'll talk about the project overall, then we'll talk about the core, the libraries, and Blinka separately. Um, so I will go ahead and get started with that and talk about the project overall. So across the entire project, we had 65 pull requests merged by 23 authors. Some names I don't recognize are L. Stein, G. Pongeli, KO8219, Gudrick, Infamy, Pixel Clay, and Malija. Um, and we had 10 different reviewers. And there were 47 issues closed by 15 people and 22 opened by 18 people, so we're net down quite a bit um, overall. So with that, I will turn it over to Scott to talk about the core. Hello. So the numbers for the core, there were 25 pull requests merged from 12 different authors. So thank you to all of our authors. We had six reviewers, so as always, we're looking for more reviewers because the more reviewers we have, the more authors we can support. Uh, pull request wise, we had uh, 15, we have 15 open pull requests. Uh, three of those are greater than 100 days old. Uh, everything else is a lot uh, younger, which is good. Um, and as always, as well, uh, please take a look at uh, any pull requests that you have been worked on that may not be uh, making any progress. We'd like to close those in the interim or actually uh, get them merged in. Um, so that's pull requests. Issue-wise, we had 22 closed issues by four people, 11 opened by eight people. So we're back down under 500 at 496 open issues, which is good. Um, thank you to everybody who's been uh, chipping away at closing issues. And then uh, in terms of milestones, this is how we kind of triage. We've got one open issue for 7.2, which is the next stable release. Uh, we've got 23 open issues for 7xx, which are bugs that we should probably fix sooner rather than later. Uh, and then we've got eight open issues for 8.0. Um, 444 open issues under long term. So that's... Uh, the state of issues in CircuitPython, and that's it for the core. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. All right, so next up, I will talk about the libraries. So across, this is uh, this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a couple of extras. So across all of those repos, we had 36 pull requests merged from 15 authors and nine reviewers. 
uh, two of those PRs that were closed were over 100 days. One was over 200 days. So we're still working on getting those older PRs uh, looked at and merged. Uh, and that leaves us with 11 open pull requests, which is by far the smallest number we've had in a very long time. Uh, we had 24 issues closed by 13 people and nine opened by nine people, uh, which is excellent to have that many people involved in uh, new issues. And that leaves us with 625 open issues. 212 of those are good first issues. Um, if you're looking to contribute to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find both the open set of open issues and the set of open PRs. And if you're looking to get started reviewing, check out the PRs. If you're looking to get started contributing code or documentation, etc., check out the open issues. If you're new to everything, Good First Issue is a great place to start. We also have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, and we're always available on Discord to help you. We want you to be able to contribute in a way that works for you. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, we have two new libraries, Adafruit CircuitPython Typing and Adafruit CircuitPython ESP32 TFT, as well as a number of updated libraries, which I will not read off, um, but that list is available in the notes doc. And, oh, okay, so Melissa is out today, so I will turn it over to Jeff to talk about Blinka. Hello, just got to find that unmute button. So uh, Blinka is a compatibility layer for MicroPython and Linux-based single board computers that lets you run uh, your CircuitPython code on a lot more platforms. And in the last week, there were full, four pull requests merged from three authors and three reviewers leaving five open pull requests. Issues-wise, there was one issue closed and two issues were open, leaving 71 open issues. And we track how many people are using Blinka by our PyWheels download count, and in the last month, there were 15,786. The number of supported boards is 87. And I know one of the things that happened in Blinka this past week is related to the optional typing that a lot of people have been working on across the libraries. And um, I believe it was Dan who created a new library and moved some of the typing stuff into it and moved it out of Blinka. And that's good because we can iterate on it faster and uh, get more stuff done. So that's what I know about Blinka. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. All right. And that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries in Blinka. So next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the great things that folks are up to in our community. It is held as a round robin. I will start and then I will go through the list and either read off notes or give anyone who uh, is participating a chance to uh, read off their own. So my hug reports this week, I have a hug for Foamy Guy for putting together two quick demos for the TFT Feather using the TFT for me to add to the guide. It was super helpful. Um, I don't work with displays all that often. And uh, that's pretty much the major thing that people are asking for, for this board. And so I needed to put together two guide pages for folks and um, having those demos available was, was super helpful. Um, to Tech Trick for jumping into reviewing head first. Uh, I'm really happy to see that um, there's been a lot of uh, PR reviews being done. Uh, Tectric only just joined the review team and um, definitely hit the ground running. To Naradoc for always jumping in to help folks in the Help with CircuitPython channel on Discord. Uh, they always help incredibly quickly and they're incredibly helpful. Um, it, they're usually available and uh, always have thoughtful responses. A hug report to Jepler for helping me with some code I'm working on. Pair programming with you is a lot of fun. To Dan for talking through a decision about the same code regarding where to put a particular property. And to Crayola for explaining bitwise operations on registers in a way that clicked for me. Next up, I have notes to read off from C. Grover who has a hug report for Jeff for assistance and patience on the U decimal PR 
And congratulations to Tammy Makes Things for an ex excellent inaugural live streaming episode. Looking forward to the next. And next up is Dan. Thank you. Um, thanks to Scott, Jeff, and Katni. We had a bug triage meeting uh, late um, la last week after the regular meeting. That was really helpful. And we narrowed the bugs that we wanted to fix for 720 and made some other decisions about various bugs. So it's it's we have these meetings occasionally and they're long, but they're very productive getting to figure out what we really want to fix. Thanks to Jeff for the MicroPython 118 merge, which from my point of view went really smoothly. Um, thanks to Scott for starting to work on USB host. That'll be really useful for a lot of people. Thanks to Tetrick, who's working on a lot of things, including async IO documentation and fixes to async IO library uh, brought on by checking things. Um, thanks to KMatch98 for weekend fixes for 720RC0 and to Foamy Guy for thorough testing. Foamy Guy found some problems after some initial acceptances, which was very helpful. Uh, thanks to Naradoc and Purple Z for a number of fixes. Uh, all these are very helpful. And thanks to Dave Putz for doing a really good job of debugging why a particular auto reload issue is happening. And uh, now we can really, he's really narrowed it down. That's really helpful. Thanks to you, Katni, for keeping an eye on pin names, making sure they're not inconsistent, that you fix something. Uh, one in particular is what I'm thinking of. Um, I2C TFT or TF2 ITC, I can't remember the difference. Thanks to maker Melissa for freezing portal libraries into portals to fix memory issues and uh, fixing a bunch of long-standing problems of people trying to do uh, large fetches of things from the internet. And finally, thanks to uh, Nicholas Toller V and all the contributors to Mu for the 1.1.1 stable release of Mu, which came out two hours ago or so. So I encourage you to upgrade your version of Mu if you haven't already. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Next up, I have some notes to read off from Dexter Starboard, who has a hug report for KMatch, Foamy Guy, and Dan for their work on preserving the terminal messages. Next up, I have some more notes to read from Foamy Guy. Uh, first up, Lady Ada and PT for the opportunities and neat project ideas they've sent my way, as well as kind words and feedback on the Pi Portal Winamp project. To Tammy Makes Things, congrats on the first stream. To Dexter Starboard and Seagrover and others for helping troubleshoot GZIP decompression of data obtained from Web API. To Mark Gambler for working on the Zlib module in the core. To Johnny Bergdahl for helping moderate YouTube chat during my stream. For Kmatch for working on fixes around preserving terminal messages after code.py ends and to Tectric for some enhancements to display I.O. widgets and joining the graphics team on CircuitPython.org. Next up is Jeff. Hi. So uh, I also want to congratulate Foamy Guy for a really slick project that is getting a ton of attention. Uh, a hug for you, Katni, for continuing to find time to grow your coding skills in between, in between guides, 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 and more guides. Uh, to Scott for being thoughtful about the changing work-life balance that your family is about to have. Um, as you know, we are going to absolutely work with you and be flexible and pick up what uh, you need to leave behind for a little while. Uh, a hug to Dan for the release candidate and for dealing with yet another curious CI problem that only became apparent when actually tagging a release. And last but not least, a group hug because I enjoy my time with y'all. Thanks, Jeff. Next up is Jerry. Hello. Let's see. Where to go? There it is. Uh, yeah. So, uh, well, Niradoc, uh, Anecdata, Rimwolf, Deshapu, Dan, and probably some others that I've forgotten. A lot of people were trying to help me try and understand the the Dell operator this week, and uh, uh, trying to help me understand it's been a challenge. So, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Jerry. Next up, I have some notes to read uh, from KMatch. First up, uh, to RS Bone for identifying an issue and Foamy Guy and Dan for PR testing. To Lady Ada for considering a new Pi portal. To Tectric and Naradoc for Git help. 
and to Scott for guidance on the ESP32 S3 RGB displays and display I.O. Next up is notes from Melissa, who says, Hug report to Katni for always doing such a great job on product guides, guides, especially on the pinouts page, and a group hug. Next up, I have notes for Mark Gambler who has a hug report for Jeff for doing or for some info on how the tests work and how to run them to Dan, Carter, Ann, and Katney for finding, helping, and pointing me how to correct a missing font file and version problem in the first guide pages I did to Dan and Foamy Guy for some initial feedback on moving uh, UZLib to CircuitPython and group hug because I'm sure I'm missing others this week. Uh, next up, I have some more notes, this time from Tammy Makes Things, a uh, group hug to the community for being awesome. Next up is Scott. Hello. Uh, first, a hug report to Dave Putz for continuing to tackle bugs in CircuitPython, in particularly the auto reload one that Dan referred to. A uh, hug report to KMatch for quickly helping uh, to fix a bug in 7.2 as well. And then generally, everybody for being awesome. Um, I, know, I know group hugs can be a little bit vague, but um, really just looking through Discord and stuff, it's amazing all of the different people that are contributing on a daily basis uh, to CircuitPython. So thank you all. Thanks, Scott. Hmm. All right, last up, I have notes from Tectric, who has a hug for Dan, Naradoc, and Anecdata for always answering my questions, both for CircuitPython development and my own projects. To Dan Catney and Mark Gambler for patiently helping get the CircuitPython build environment set up. To Catney for showing how to make um, releases for the libraries. To Foamy Guy for welcoming me to the exciting world of CircuitPython display IO graphics. And to Maker Melissa for the insightful typing PR to platform detect with some new tricks I didn't know. And that is Hug Reports. Next up is Status Updates. Status updates is an opportunity for us to sync up on what we've been up to since the last meeting and what we'll be doing until the next meeting. Um, so take a couple of minutes, talk about where you're at. This is also an opportunity for providing uh, tips and tricks. If it's something you're working on, you can help someone else, etc. cetera. Um, and then any, any discussions that become a bit long, we can shift to in the weeds if that makes sense. So I will start and then we'll continue on down the list. So first up, uh, last week, I finished up the ADXL 375 guide. There were a few tweaks that needed to be done after it was published, um, so I got those fixed up, and then added the offset functionality to the ADXL 34X and 37X libraries. Um, basically, you lay the board flat, you run this code, and then it, it, set, it sets these offsets that essentially calibrate it better. Um, and uh, that example is in both of those, available in both of those libraries because the offset math is uh, different for, for both. Um, I published the uh, VEML 7700 guide update. That was a STEM QT rev update um, because the board, uh, we released it with the um, with STEM QT connectors on it. Um, did a couple of small fixes to the Feather TFT guide and then completed the I2C onboard and external CircuitPython essential pages and the TFT basics and TFT Wi-Fi GitHub stars viewer pages in the Feather TFT guide as well. Um, the TFT pages are no longer in moderation. Um, so, and then I finally I recorded my episode of the CircuitPython show podcast, which is scheduled to be released on uh, March 1st, as far as I know. Uh, this week, finish up the rest of the CircuitPython Essentials pages in the Feather TFT guide. I will also be in non-CircuitPython world, creating a new template for using the built-in TFT with Arduino and adding to the Feather guide, and also adding a factory demo page with the TFT I2C example for Arduino. Um, then the next guide on my list is for the new MCP23017 I2C GPIO expander breakout with STEMIQT. Um, it's a whole new board, so it's I think it's going to get a whole new guide. Um, and 
create the CircuitPython Essentials template for Async I.O., which keeps getting bumped. It's been on my list for a month or something to that effect, but this other stuff is taking priority, so um, it will probably continue to get bumped. Uh, and with that, I will turn it over to Dan. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as mentioned, um, I, I worked on some more type annotation issues in various libraries. I didn't work on them so much as just uh, approve stuff that other people have done, but it sort of pointed out the need to take um, some of the, the CircuitPython typing class out of Blinka because it doesn't really need to be in Blinka. So I created a separate library for that, and then there were a bunch of fix-ups associated with moving that, including uh, putting it, making a change to CircUp. And I'm glad that I put in something to CircUp a, uh, a few weeks ago, which is that it notifies you when it needs to be updated. So eventually, not necessarily immediately, but you will eventually be notified that CircUp should be updated. Um, I fixed one bug for 720, which was fix unneeded waiting for USB when coming out of deep sleep. That was suggested by uh, several people and Scott uh, kind of set out what to do. Um, I'm looking at things that are happening in CPython, which is version 3.11 is under development and uh, stuff is finally going on to put task groups in async, async IO. Task groups are a really structured way of doing asynchronous tasks that uh, have been uh, shown to be useful in the Trio and Curio and other libraries. And um, now they finally went into CPython. There was a prerequisite of adding some features to exceptions, and it took several years for that to happen, basically. So this is finally happening, and we can hopefully eventually have task groups in our version of async IO also, which will make it uh, easier and safer to use async tasks. Um, I released 720RC0. As mentioned, uh, this week I will release 720RC1 probably sometime today. I was, I was out just before the meeting, so I haven't seen anything new has come up. But if there's no showstoppers, I'll release that. And if that seems to be good at some point, maybe later this week or maybe at the beginning of next week, we'll uh, convert RC.1 or whatever RC it is to 7.2 final. And I'm continuing to work on uh, adding async capability to the request library or making a new library. I keep saying this and I'm working on it slowly, but uh, a lot of the release stuff has uh, taken precedence over that. But I've got, I actually did some coding on that last night, so that's good. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next up, I have notes from Foamy Guy. Last week, PyPortal Winamp Guide was published and much to my delight, featured on Desk of Lady Ada. Support for Titano and a few other tweaks is in the works this week. Created a few examples for Feather TFT ESP32 S2. Tested core PRs for Zlib module and terminal output preservation. Looking into core issues labeled display I.O. to find ones that I think I have the ability to tackle. This week, trying to figure out where and how to update the certificates that CircuitPython uses for making HTTPS requests, and build out the U.S. government web analytics display project. Pro proof of concept in fetching and decompressing data is complete, but I need to hook up additional APIs for more information and polish the visual ex appearance. Next up is Jeff. All right. Uh, last week, I merged MicroPython version 1.18 into our main branch. Uh, so that brings us up to date with their last release. Uh, we got some bug fixes to the core and also some performance improvements. And just to note that this will be in uh, version 7.3, not 7.2, because we didn't want to make any risky changes kind of late in the game. Um, in the floppy drive world, that's still uh, under Arduino but I've been successfully reading and writing non-copy protected Commodore 64, 64 disks, including the flippy disks that you have to uh, flip over when you uh, are using them in a Commodore 64 by doing a reversible modification to the floppy drive that I use. This week, I am actually getting around to preparing for my upcoming presentation at the Dublin Linux Users Group, really this time. I'm redoing the wiring on my Flippy mod. It's kind of really bad right now, and getting some guide quality photos of the process. 
Uh, I do hope to pick up some bug fixes, so I'll check out the 7xx list on uh, GitHub. And I badly need to do a full tidy and reset of my main work area soon. It's gotten kind of out of hand. And looking a little bit further ahead than that, uh, I ordered an Apple IIe from eBay for some more floppy fun. And I'm preparing a pull request to Grease Weasel to add support for some 8-bit Atari floppy formats. Their very original format is 90 KB, and I've got one floppy to test with, and it is working for me. So I just need to create that PR, and then people can preserve their Atari 8-bit floppies. Excellent. Thanks, Jeff. Next up is Jerry. Hi. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so got really involved in a project this week that grew out of a, 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 help for, a help request that came on Discord. And um, this is an example that doesn't take much to entertain me. But uh, the um, a user was trying to use a bunch of, bunch of different modules, um, a GPS, a BBME 680, and an SD card, all on a Feather M0 RFM9X, which is a non-Express M0 board. So you know, my first reaction, and I think that of others, was don't even bother trying. You're, you're not going to get there. Um, you just can't. There's just not enough RAM to import all those things, and that's, they were running out of memory all the time. But that user had an, they had some interesting stuff in their test code that they posted, and they were using this operator that I had never even heard of called Dell, um, which I assume has something to do with delete. But um, it's a way of, of freeing my, you know, the RAM or the the um, the variables used by a module um, in Python. And so they were actually getting a lot farther than I thought they should. And and so I took a look at what they were doing, and then reworked their code a bunch and flailed around with it a whole lot. And it turns out it actually works really well. Um, and the problem is that I still don't fully understand how to optimally use this thing. And, but, but through a lot of trial and error and a lot of, a lot of sort of false starts, it, it actually really is working well. And the basic idea is that you, if you can separate all your op your your activities to make a function to operate a sensor. So say you want to read from the BME 680, you go into a function that goes to do a read. It imports the library, does what it needs to do, um, and then when it's done, it delete it does this Dell operator to get rid of the library. And then when you return from that function, you use the garbage collector to clear things out, and you end up restoring most of the RAM to the system. And then you can go in and do the same thing with the GPS. And then do the same thing to read to send the data over the RFM 9x, something that never worked before. You, you no way you could import all those modules. So it's really interesting. Um, and so I'm, I'm now trying to to work on a clear way of sort of setting up examples of how you can do this uh, in general. But it really might be applicable and, and add a lot of usability to some of these um, old, you know M0 boards that uh, a lot of us have kind of written off. So it's been a lot of fun and uh, very confusing. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah. Next up, I have some notes from KMatch. Last week, both created and fixed a couple of bugs on the REPL Wrangler that allows users to move and resize the REPL terminal. Started update to Cartesian graph widget to allow multiple lines and colors. Tore down another model of conference room touchscreen display for repurposing and hacking. This week, continue Cartesian widget updates, dealing with auto ranging and tick marks. Map out a first draft of how to connect the ESP32 S3 RGB dot clock peripheral to display I.O. And explore the ESP32 S3 LCD peripheral functions in the ESP IDF. Next, I have some notes from Mark. Uh, who says last week moved XTMod UZLib library to CircuitPython, provides decompression utilities for bytes and streams. Next, I have some notes from Melissa, who says last week froze some libraries into the portal type boards in CircuitPython, added missing boards to CircuitPython.org, added missing type annotations to platform detect, and created the ESP32S2 TFT portal style library for the ESP32. TFT Feather. This week, continuing to work on some GitHub items as well as minor guide updates. Next, I have notes 
from Tammy Makes Things, who says, Last week, completed the PR for the AS7341 library and got that merged. At Dan's request, submitted and completed a PR to the AS7341 library to specify a minimum version of Blinka in the requirements. This alleviates some of the challenges of bound type hinting in the libraries. And did my first CircuitPython Maker live stream on Twitch. This week, fixed my camera and por touch portal setup for my live streams. Work on more of the type hinting issues in the libraries. Get a bit better acquainted with the structure of the core code so I can start finding places to contribute there. And figure out my ongoing streaming schedule and submit a PR to the CircuitPython weekly repo to announce it. Um, upcoming, first regular Twitch stream, probably the week of 228. Next up is Scott. Hello. Um, last week, I got TinyUSB host example going on the IMX RT1060, which is the board that I'm targeting for my USB host work because it already has USB host support. Um, it doesn't necessarily have support for the second USB, so I might have to add that, but it shouldn't be too bad. Um, I started sketching out the API for USB host, including actually like writing using a tablet uh, input thing on my stream. So I have a pretty good idea of what I think the, the lowest level of the USB host API should be. Um, so one thing I can do this week is uh, continue to write that up and start implementing it. Uh, but last week I did get let myself get a little distracted and fixed two things for the release as well. Um, and that was a nice small win uh, for the week last week. And I can't remember what they are, so we could look up if we if we cared. Uh, this week, uh, it's a short week because Monday was a holiday, so that's why we're on Tuesday. I'm trying to go heads down on USB this USB host this week. Um, and uh, the, the deep dive on Friday will be the second to last one. I'm going to not run up on deep dives right up until the babies do because uh, babies don't necessarily hit their due date. Um, and speaking of babies, I'm out next Monday as well for a baby moon. We're going uh, to a spa. So I'll be back on Tuesday next week. And uh, Foamy Guy will be taking over the Correct. deep dive from you um, while you're out. Yeah, yeah, he'll be... Yeah, he'll be doing uh, deep dives in that, in that time slot after uh, I am. And I'm, I'm hoping to have Foamy Guy on the stream next week mm -hmm. uh, so that we can chat. Perfect. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. Next up, I have notes from Tech Trick, who says, Last week, minor bug squashing and documentation improvement PRs. Submitted PR for new functionality to the Cartesian widget for graphing area under plots. Added new library to CircuitPython org for display IO widget effects with an effect for random fluctuating a widget's value. This week, adding another effect to the widget effects library for adding rainbow colors to widgets and looking at making some more widgets for CircuitPython org. And that is status updates. Next section is in the weeds, uh, which is an opportunity for more long form discussions. There are no topics listed. Uh, this week. So I will go ahead and wrap up. Uh, this has been the CircuitPython Weekly for February 22nd, uh, 2022. Um, thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. There, it will also be featured on the Adafruit or in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held on Monday, February 28th, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. And to be notified about the meeting or any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role. We hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>